Hi, I'm Mark Cleghorn for the Academy, and uh, today we're talking about sharpening texture, specifically for a dog shoot. And uh, I'm going to show, first of all, the technique that I use through the RAW, and then I'll kind of show you the workflow for it and things. So if I just press Escape for a minute, because I'm in the um, preview window of a, a Bridge and Cabin RAW. By the way, uh, if you're looking to see the set to PR, I'll explain that now in a minute. Um, so let's take one image into RAW and basically look at the basic workflow. The first thing of an image by itself to get to the sharpening level, the first thing that I will do is obviously add a sharpening in through contrast and through uh, the black point. That's number one. I'm also then going to um, just hit the crop key and let's set it into the likes of, uh, I don't know, 10.8 for now, just so you kind of get the idea. Um, I'm then going to kind of go into the effects and I'm going to use the texture slider here. Um, and this is going to kind of uh, sharpen the edges um, of the blacks and the whites. So in other words, fur, yeah? You don't want to use clarity because clarity is the mid-tone sharpness and will give you some kind of weird effects, um, like a HDR overkill kind of thing. Um, but um, obviously there are images, some images like landscape images that you can kind of use the clarity quite successfully with. Once I've done that basic sharpness, okay, obviously I could go into curves and give it a, a full con a, co a contrast fix. However, what I want to do is go into mask. And if I just click K or as the shortcut, basically that will uh, add a new brush mask on. And, and pretty much I would say to you, it is the uh, key kind of uh, shortcut that you'll want to learn as far as uh, this technique. Another one I want to do is basically scroll down the mask in slide, uh, the slider here. And before I do anything else, I want to unchecker the reset slide, uh, slider. And the reason being, if I've got mul uh, multiple images in the same set setup and they're going to need the same fix, then obviously I want to go from here. So um, if I just kind of quickly paint with a kind of a soft brush uh, around my subject, yeah, uh, avoiding the likes of the green of the kind of the paper and so on with it. And then I come down and we're looking at the texture. OK, so if we scroll all the way down to the effects again, and now we've got another option to add the texture in within the image itself. Now, some of the times why I didn't uh, change any exposure in the beginning, sometimes when you kind of play around with some of the adjustments, you'll find that it will lighten up whites and uh, or dark and blacks and so on with it. So you might need to actually go back to that. So if we're just uh, quickly looking at the before and after and I scroll in. Uh, really what we're kind of doing here, as you can see already, what we've done is sharpen the nose, sharpen the eyes and sharpen the fur, which is exactly what we set out to do. And obviously the more I kind of paint onto it, or um, if I push up the texture more, we're going to get even a greater sharpness with it. So if I press done now, that image is basically ready to actually be processed shown to the client, whatever you want to do. But of course, we want to do that as far as a workflow is concerned, yeah? So if I was to just um, give that image a color for a minute, we'll go to no label. So we'll just kind of lose it so we don't get confused that we're actually working that one. And as I, made, I mentioned to you, basically what we're looking at here is um, setup so we've got a big soft big soft box we're only using a small part of the studio anyway a uh, big soft box when that's put in position it's going to be pretty close to the dog we've got a strip box on e either side uh, they're light they're light in the background one's hidden behind the octa in fact and then obviously we've got the separation light which is the gridded honeycomb in the background on a boom stand and you can see when we want the lower key or a mid key we just switch the actual two um, strip boxes off and then we've got an unlit white wall and an unlit white floor except from the uh, likes of the grid and the softbox itself. So with that explained, let me just bring these in. Now, if you haven't already um, renamed the image, I would rename them. So getting rid of the ones that we don't want. I would also uh, basically um, add or change the metadata uh, data within the image. And that would be to bring it up to date for copyright reasons and so on with it. So theoretically, before we go to RAW, this has to be done. Okay, I've, 
let's just uh, tools replace metadata f4 just press the tick there and that'll be done so now i'm going to bring these into the raw so control r will bring these into the develop module as it were in camera raw if you'd like to see what the Photographer Academy is all about, of course, uh, just kind of head over to the photographacademy.com or from the link below, click onto the top banner, and then this will bring you into the uh, joining page. And from here, you can actually read exactly what you get for your kind of viewers' membership. You can also join for six months or three months as well. So with our images brought into uh, the kind of the developed module in the likes of ACR now, I'm going to first of all select all of the images control a on the keyboard and that will actually select all our photographs there and the next thing i want to do is make use of the uh kind of the color so i want to choose my color from the edit med menu on here that is going to fix it and as i said i'll choose somewhere off the unlit white background there we want to go and add the contrast in so back into the light here and we would add in eight con of the contrast and then minus eight in the black. Obviously correct in anything that you need to, whether you're looking to add a little bit more kind of sparkle to the whites or less sparkle of the whites, that's really down to you. And the next thing like we did was kind of push up the texture. Uh, and then we can uh, really see the, the kind of the difference that's going on with the dog. And once we've done that, let's uh, go into the crop tool and we'll just choose, I don't know, the likes of a 10-8 crop here. And then we'll just go through each one of the images in turn. We'll just move it around, cropping into the image that we want to. Let's uh, flick the um, crop in here. And we'll just uh, Alt-S that one to do the same. Flip that crop again. So even though this is not the sharpening, we've done that already, of course, yeah? Uh, we're basically now looking at how we work that technique as a workflow across a whole shoot. That's the main thing that we've got to do because if you're doing this um, for a living, um, then you want to actually be able to do the whole kind of shooting things. So once I've done that, I can now actually go in and add the likes of the texture lift and paint that in on each in individual image. So hitting K will launch the mask tool. And at this stage, I can just shrink the brush down with the left bra bracket. Let's scroll down and make sure that it hasn't reset the texture. Remember, if this little box down the bottom is checkered it will reset it each time you press the uh, uh, letter k in fact or create a new mask so what i'm going to do now is just go across our dog and we've painted that in k again let's go ahead and actually do our fuzzy friend again this was a great dog to shoot by the way um, I'm definitely going to have to lift one side of the dog's um, face when we've shot it with the kind of the green background and the, re uh, the green card to the side. Notice as well how kind of at a distance I'm working here. Once you pretty much know the amount of texture that you like within your dog photography, your pet photography or people photography, then you can pretty much go in and um, add it and you can also increase the uh, likes of um, the brush size as well. Last but no means least, K, okay. just go from there. It's good. And if we go back down to the other image, what I want to do is just lift the side on here. So I could have um, added in at the same time I did the texture, I could have um, added in the likes of uh, a, a, a kind of a masking uh, for the face. But as I said, I wanted to apply the same texture across all of the images. Let me reset the slider now anyway by checking on that box, hitting K to create a new, a new one. Uh, at this stage, you can see that the texture slider has been reset to default. And then all I'm going to do is click on shadow and a slight lift on the exposure. And then I'm just going to paint on the right hand side of that one and this next image as well. 
if you find that you've got a little bit of green kind of coming in from the reflectancy then, then we can actually go in and change the uh, saturation or the actual tilt. So you can see what I've done there. This is affecting just that mask. If I just go control plus and bring it in. Okay, just that subtlety in the change is losing the green that was coming down onto the dog. Obviously, if you want to add even more sparkle to the likes of an eye, you're e either going to do that in the likes of Photoshop, or we could actually try and do that here. So let's hit K again, left bracket down, go into exposure, move that up quite a bit, push the contrast up as well, perhaps. Whites is going to go up as well, shrink it down for the eye. And then we can basically just push that slider up and down for that effect. Let's see if we need to do that on this eye as well. No, that's pretty good. And that's the workflow of the, Im of the images. The next thing I would do, of course, would be to save the images. And I'd save those via the drop down here and just export them as a JPEG file as in 10. I don't need to rename it because I've done all that in advance, of course. Um, let's have a quick look at the uh, before and after of the image. We will, in fact, while we're here, go in and add in um, that eye like we just did as well. Exposure, contrast, highlights and shadow. But let's look at the before and after of the image itself. So the image on the left is as we brought it in. And then the image on the right is the actual fixed image. So look at the color correction, the sharpness of the actual um, uh, snout as well as sharpen that a little bit. The eye is pin sharp now. And of course, we've got the beautiful te texture coming through on the fur. So that is how I'd encourage you to start to think about using the likes of um, a, a brush to brush in the actual texture in addition to a global adjustment. If you'd like to see what the Photographer Academy is all about, of course, uh, just kind of head over to the photographeracademy.com or from the link below, click onto the top banner, and then this will bring you into the uh, joining page. And from here, you can actually read exactly what you get for your kind of viewers membership. You can also join for six months or three months as well. Basically included is all the content and you can free download it or stream it online. We've also got assets for Photoshop, brushes, actions and smart objects. In addition to that as well, we've also got apps which are lighting apps and posing apps for your smart device.